Derek, the way Will is throwing the ball down the field and, and, and you know, 20-yard passes and things like that, are you seeing some more room to run with uh, the defense maybe having to respect the deep ball a little bit? I mean, if we are being efficient and um, making big plays in the pass game, I think that correlates to, you know, having space in the run game. And, you know, the same way with, with the run, if you run the ball effectively, then it was up for the pass. So. What did you say to Ryan? Uh, in the aftermath of the decision being made? Oh, I just told him, um, you don't want to see, you know, your teammate go through something like that, but I just told him, you know, just got to keep working, um, keep focused on getting better, um, and just, just stay locked in with it, and um, keep, just keep being yourself. Same thing to Will, or kind of business as usual since he started the last two games? No, I, really, I didn't really say anything to Will. Um, you know, he's been preparing, and um, doing what he's supposed to do, and you know, his last few games been playing well. So, you know, just keep keep doing what you've been doing. Have you been impressed? Uh, you know, I guess you touched on it there. Have you been impressed on, on what he's done so far, and you know, some of the things he's helped with with the offense? I mean, yeah, I mean, thought he's been doing a great job. Um, they can only only get better and um, keep on improving. Um, you know, he's coming to work every day and um, um, working to get better. And um, you know, it's been been fun having him in there, and just excited to see what's what's to come. About wanting to be clearer in the huddle, kind of better at calling the plays. Just from your perspective, how's he been in the huddle aspect of it all? Say it again. Well, with the huddle, how how good is he at delivering plays when he's calling? Uh, you said he said he wants to be clear. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, the play's been been called right when we were running them right. I mean, I don't. I mean, that's just something for himself, I guess. I don't know. You've got a sense of urgency. We want to win every week, but nine games left. What's kind of mindset of this team, and, and kind of is there kind of a now or never type uh, mindset going into what's left? Yeah, I think you just take it week by week. Um, focus on each 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 opponent each each week. Um, focus on being one to know in that week. Um, being locked in on everything, and try to go out there and go get a win on Sunday. They're coming off a Thursday game, having a few extra days built in there. Do you feel like those extra couple of days help out with the freshness and, and your body just feeling better? Hit you know having the extra day off. I mean, we, you know, you get like a little mini bye week on Thursday night game, so it gets the guys time to get their bodies back under them, be ready for the next week. So the body feels good. What have you seen from the Bucks defense on tape? Um, they're a great defense. Um, I think they've been solid for a long time. Um, I feel like those guys have been playing together for a while too. Um, you know, they're um, disruptive up front, especially uh, with 50 and Arvita Vea, um, smart linebackers, the stick linebackers with um, Devontae David and um, Devin White. Um, you know they got uh, great corners, um, some safeties who are who are good in the run game. Um, so they're they're a solid defense all around. Um, you know, so you just got to be locked in and uh, in the meetings and letting it correlate to the to the practice field and um, you know going through uh, the game plan. Just so when we, when we go out there on Sunday, we're ready to execute. They're a solid defense for sure. When you were young, starting out, how much did you kind of gauge your week to week progress, like? watching film on this game and kind of comparing it or, or thinking, well, I did this better or I still need to work on, on that. Say it again. Did, did, did you kind of track your week to week progress in terms of uh, I'm steadily getting better or I need to, to, to work on this? Did you measure yourself that way? I mean, I think every player evaluates itself um, week after week, game after game, seeing what they can do better, what they can improve on. I think that's how you get better. I think that's how you grow as a football player. I think you know every player does that, no matter however, however the game goes. Derek, you've won a lot of games here. A lot of the guys you won those games with are, are gone, or in Ryan's case now in a backup role. What gives you the confidence that the current group in the locker room can win games down the stretch in this season and make it a successful year? Yeah, I mean, I don't get that that deep into thinking about you know all all of that. I mean, it's still football. We still got to go play. Um, we still got the right guys to go in there and. And go do it. You guys just got to go do it, and um, you know, play well on Sunday, um, pull it all together on all three phases, and go out there and get a win. But I don't really get into all the, all the other stuff. You know, I got a game to play and focus on my job. What I need to do. You feel any different to get with the carries a touch down, in huh? terms of in terms of wear and tear at halfway through, or is that something you're not conscious of at all? Apparently, I'm I'm not going to sit here and say I'm wear and tear. No, I feel I feel great, ready to go play, and um. You no, know, excited to play a game on Sunday. The, uh, the lack of road wins. Uh, does does it feel different when you go on the road? Uh, you know, it, it's been nearly a year now since this team has won away from Nashville. Can you tell it, or is it just one of those things that, uh, 
you can't put a finger to it as to why that there hasn't been more success on the road lately. Yeah, I think we're just not executing when we get on the road. Um, I don't know, whatever the case may be. But hopefully it changes this Sunday. Um, I think we just need to execute in all three phases. Um, uh, do do more of the small things um, um, in, in games, the details of the play. Um, and I think it just comes down to execution for real. And, we'll, we'll, and when we get down in the red zone and putting points, getting in the end zone, because, you know, we um, it's hard to get down there in this league. And when you get down there, you got to make sure, you know, it ends with seven. I mean, field goals are, are, are fun, but at the end of the day, you know, you want to get seven points to be able to win. Thank you. Uh, did you see any improvement going from a, a home game to playing on the road? And and where do you, is there specific points that you try to focus in with on Will to try and help him uh, improve from week mm -hmm. to week now at this point? Yeah, yeah. You know, it doesn't it doesn't change with uh, with how we handle anybody really. We're always going to continue to try these guys to to improve. Um, he did a great job being able to go in and handle the environment. Uh, operation was clean. Um, you know. Uh, and, and a half in terms of, of our two-minute execution was clean. Um, so uh, he did a really good job being able to go and handle that, that environment, which is a tough place to play, especially on prime time. Um, and, and, yeah, we're, we're definitely looking forward to, to making some strides again this week. How much you're going through that process, right? You mentioned the things you did well. You guys want to win, but yeah. there's expectations. How do you kind of balance that still being patient and allowing him to develop as a player while having the high expectations? Yeah, um, I mean the 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 expectations never gonna never gonna change the standards never gonna change um, so obviously we we need to do a better job everybody needs to do a better job to make sure that that we're we're scoring more points and putting our team in a position to win uh, the thing for us where where we need to do continue to do a good job um, again with everybody but especially with whale is is being able to go and, and have those teachable moments for them um, you know the end of the game there for him uh, that that throw we made to Josh, you know probably not a throw that definitely not a throw we want to make in that situation and, and him just understanding, okay there was I think there was 11 seconds left right we should have two cracks at this thing, if it's not clean right we can get this ball throw it somewhere where it's our guy no guy and, and not putting the ball at risk, um, and that's just one example of of a moment that you know. I'm, I'm not necessarily sure everyone understands the levity of it until they're in it and, and until they have to go and make that decision and make that throw. So finding different examples like that to be able just to continue to teach him and, and, and continue to, to, to help his progression. In, ter in, in terms of being able to play to Will's strengths as a quarterback versus what you've played to with Ryan's strengths as a quarterback, does that change your play call at in certain situations at all, knowing you know maybe what he's good at versus what Ryan was good at. Yeah, we're always going to try to continue to to cater to the skill sets of our players. Um, so yeah. So because of his, his arm strength, his ability to maybe throw with somebody bearing down on him, or, or as he's getting hit, are you willing to occasionally take more risk? Um, I don't think there was any any. Uh, I don't think we had any reserve or, or any worries about taking risks with anybody that that's been under center for us. So, that example you were talking about a throw to Josh was that one where he came to you and said, <clears throat> "What did I do wrong?" Or did you kind of approach him just kind of what is the dynamic there? Yeah, uh, he, no, it's he, he. As soon as it happened, I was waiting for it to come up on the on the jumbotron to to get a look at it, um, and he came over. And when he came over, luckily it came on the screen, and and we were kind of able to. Uh, to have a mini film session, if you will, right there in front of however many people were in, the, in attendance. But um, his willingness to learn and his willingness to 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 want to do right and and, and to want to you know to want to win, um, you know, was has never been in doubt. But it was never clearer to me than it was at that moment. Those face-to-face -face teachable moments is that a part of the reason why you are down on the field when you're calling plays? Yeah, I think there's a lot that that goes into that. Um, I think you get a true feel for. The environment you get a feel for your guys up front uh, when when they're when they're running off the ball when they're when they're surging, if you will. I think you get a, a feel for the big fella, right? You you, you feel him run, um, and then yeah, being able to have that immediate uh, feedback within the the dialogue, the back and forth. Um, you know, one of the benefits to being to being on the field, and you know, there's drawbacks too. Obviously, when you're up top, you get to see more, and, and you're kind of taken away from from the emotional part of the game, if you will. Um, so there's there's pros and cons to everything, but. 
What's the challenge like, for, I guess, for you as far as offensive line goes with a couple of guys now banged up and trying to find replacements? And how's Dylan done kind of stepping up when he's had opportunities? Yeah, he's done a great job um, being able to come in. And, and again, when we've talked about it, basically just, hey, man, like wh whatever's going to get us the best five on the field. Um, and, and he's done that. He's come in and, and spelled us a guard. He's spelled us a tackle, and he's come in, and we haven't skipped a beat. Um, so, you know, hats off to him and his preparation um, and, and, and his mentality. That, that, that's not an easy job. Uh, and, and it's a great job by Sully Haas and Jonesy in there and making sure that those guys are not just, you know, in, in just learning one position. They're, they're learning the whole concepts and learning the whole scheme. Um, and, yeah, so he, he provides us a little bit of versatility uh, and gives us an opportunity to make sure that, that we get the best five out there. Expectation from Andre if, if he's back in after having been taken out. Yeah, block his guy. Uh, again, the expectations aren't aren't going to change um, for for you know what the what the job description is, uh, what the standard is, what what we expect uh, from our guys when they go out there and play. Will, would you would you give Will like on a given week compared to Ryan the same amount of stuff? I mean, like, do you feel like he's got full command of everything at this point? Or yeah, something? yeah. These uh, you know if if we went and looked and compared the. The amount of plays that were up in the game plan, they were that they've been consistent with with whoever's been under center. What do you think beyond arm strength has helped led us with the big chunk plays and the X plays and so yeah. on? Yeah, um, you know uh, the guys up front have done a good job of of being able to to provide him the time to be able to get that ball off. Um, the guys that have been running the routes have been like that route that Hop ran uh, when we were backed up. I think it was what was it, the end of the first quarter. Right when it was it was first and twenty three, I think like that was a great read by him. Uh, it was a great reaction by Will to be on the same page, and it was an accurate throw. So, uh, yeah, and, and you know he's got a big arm, but it's 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 everybody around him that's been able to, to keep him upright and keep him clean. Um, and then our guys have been doing a great job of going down and making plays on the ball. Peer back to, to Pittsburgh, the, the second to last drive, four minutes left. What was the thinking with the run, run, run before and the deep ball? Yeah. Uh, well, the first play there was was you know a reverse. Um, thought we could get a, an explosive play with that. Um, I think that got us five, got us into a second and five situation. Wanted to uh, run run a, a play there for us um, that was going to either get a first down or get us into a, a third manageable. Um, we didn't execute that. Uh, we thought we were going to have multiple. Or we knew we were going to have four downs. Um, so the same thought process went there. We had a good play that we thought was um, good for the situation that we had rep throughout the week. Uh, that was either going to be a first down or get us into a fourth and, and close, fourth and short. Uh, we didn't execute, and then we didn't convert on the fourth down. That fourth down play, you know, with that um, that backside burst one on one, mm -hmm. I, I imagine that's an alert. But do you want him to go there in that situation? You had that the, the, the three by one, you know, the three on the right with Phillips. Phillip, Phillip, Phillip. If he caught it, would you ask that question? You know what I mean? Like, 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 you know what I mean? So like that, that's, that's where we're at. So we, we love that matchup going into the week. We had it earlier in the game. Uh, I want to say it was on the third quarter. Ball was on the right hash. Traylon ended up smoking him. Uh, ball went somewhere else. So, you know, when, when we're sitting there and we're getting him ready, it's like, hey, big alert here on this particular play. Um, he had the matchup. If, you know, six more inches to the right and it's first and goal from the four. So uh, th that's the type of trust that we have in our playmakers. Um, in, in our quarterbacks to be able to, to make those to, those those decisions, um, and, and again, it's something that where if that wasn't if that wasn't prepared for or talked about throughout the week, then yeah, I had a big issue with it. But with that particular matchup and the way that Traylon had been running, we felt good about it, and it just didn't hit. But that's still lower, like a lot lower percentage, right? When you're trying to just move the chains on a on sure, a, yeah. Again, a, like if you know, if six more inches to the right, you know what I mean. So it's it's. It's very easy, and, 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 and that's a part that, uh, for me personally, being able to kind of learn and grow from it is, is, you know, you have to be able to teach the process and not the result. So as we're going through, and hey, this is what we game planned, we like it, we like that matchup, um, and then you can't tell someone that, and then when they go and do what you had prepared for and it didn't work out, you can't be like, well, why the hell did you throw that ball? You know what I mean? Because then now all of a sudden it's, it's well, well, what do you want me to do? So, um, yeah, if, if it was a matchup that we hadn't talked about uh, previously that we had earlier in the game, then, I, you know, I, I'd be with you guys, but I'm all for it. How do you like the way that, 
how do you like the way that connects him with, with he and Kyle Phillips is, is going? It, mm -hmm. it seemed like they did that most of the time. Yeah, yeah, Kyle did a great job uh, winning his routes. Um, and, and, you know, came up in, uh, in the two-minute drill especially. He, he was open. We'll trust him. And that's the thing. Like, Kyle's been out here, and, and he's been running, and he's been working. Um, and, and, you know, when, when you put that time in the grass and, and you're where the quarterback needs you to be and you're able to win, uh, you know, with raw craft and, and suddenness, um, it creates separation, and, and you know, uh, the quarterback found him. Like he has settled in, played well for you the last couple of weeks. Anything changed with him or just kind of been more perfect in his technique? Yeah, I think uh, being out here practicing, uh, trying to improve the technique and fundamentals is vital. Um, I think he's played square. He's challenged. Uh, he's made some big plays for us. So hopefully that continues. But I'm, I'm proud of him with how he's responded. And, and we just got to keep going, keeping that consistency. Surprised, I guess, is, is the word about how drastic that change in the run be. You know, you guys had that long stretch, what, eight, ten weeks, and then it's just. Yeah, I mean, I'm not surprised when you go back and look at the film, you know. Um, it's just we got to be more consistent, play with technique, fundamentals. Um, at times, we play with a light, a light box. We've been able to get away with that a little bit more in the past and what we're doing right now. Um, but ultimately, like, you go back and look at that Pittsburgh game. They had five runs for 84 yards, I think, and it was all self-inflicted wounds, right? We gave up two two on the edge that shouldn't have been able to get out there where our body's out there and they just end up bouncing it and we're not able to get off and make a play or we start retreating, giving some ground, and they get around there. Um, so we just got to make sure we're locked in. Everybody understanding their role. It takes all 11. Passing game, running game, it takes all 11. Everybody's got a job to do on every single play. Making sure where they got, where they're supposed to be, how they got to fit, and then we got to make sure we're getting guys on the ground. Some of the guys talk like, like the run defense failures recently, uh, and and the pass rush failures recently are, are an aberration from from like what you are, but the stats over eight games say that's what you are. <coughs> Do you think the guys have a clear feeling for what you are? Yeah, and I th I think that probably stems from Paul a little bit what I just talked about, like. You go back and you, you watch these games, there's six to eight plays that are killing us and costing us, right? Like like I said, the five plays for 84 yards, you take those out, it's 20-some runs for 80 yards, right? So there's few and far between, and we got to be better on those plays, and we can't sacrifice our technique fundamentals and give up those chunks because it is. The, the stats don't lie. The stats don't lie, and if that's what you are, that's what you are, and we got to make sure we do a better job of being more consistent and eliminating the big ones. Is there a way to fix consistency? I mean, if that's the issue. Keep working. Keep working. I mean, we got to <coughs> keep working at it. Guys got to trust what their job is in each scheme. Um, we got to make sure we understand our role, right? Like I mentioned earlier, it takes all 11. Um, I think there is an understanding of it, but come Sunday, come Thursday night when it matters, we got to be able to do it. Up, there's always variables, right, in, in, in runs and different plays. But is it is it come down to if you're winning at a higher rate up front, then you can eliminate some of those possible variables, possible mistakes? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a it takes everybody. I'm, there's times those front guys get doubled, right, and those backers got to be able to fit. They got to be able to take some of those doubles off so the other front guys can show up. I think it incorporates everybody. A safety potentially feeling filling in a hole. Um, I mean, at times, guys are going to get reached, right? Outside zone, guys get reached. It's on the guys behind them to make them right, right? That's part of football. It happens every single game. Um, so I think there's got to be coordination. There's got to be understanding of where, where I'm supposed to fit. But at the same time, I might have to make somebody right at times. With the lack of pressures and sacks, like how do you look at it? So I'm saying, okay, well, the quarterback, like, uh, Pittsburgh, you know, throwing the ball really fast. I just say, well, they're not winning up front. How do you view that? Yeah, I think it's a, it's a combination. I think it's a little bit of everything. Um, I got to do a better job of getting these guys in situations where they can't win, right? Um, I think when we do get those opportunities, we, we do have to win. I think that's part of it. Um, I think the ball out quick comes into play at times, of course. Um, I think there's a lot, of, a lot of things that go into it. I really do. Um, just like in like I'm talking about in the run game, it's going to be all 11 every single step, right? So if we're able to challenge, if we're able to be tight, if we're able to possibly get them to go to a second read, that's going to buy some time as well, 
right? Um, but we got to make sure we're locked in. And the and the the games aspect that we've had success with at the time, I think the coordination of some of those things at times has cost us, right? Where we're wasting some rushes, where we got to be, do a better job making sure we're all on the same page with that. What is the big difference at home as opposed to on the road? It seems like at home, like the guys, they go crazy, but it doesn't happen as much on the road. Uh, honestly, I don't know if I have the answer to that right now. You know, I think we just got to make sure we're ready to go and and take the same approach. I think we do going into games in terms of our mentality. Um, but third down, we got to own that down. Like we got to treat it as our down. We got to have that mentality that put the onus on them, put the pressure on them to have to convert. Um, and we got to make sure we're taking that mentality every single third down to try to get off the field. Have enough of your guys gotten better week to week steady progression over the season? Yeah, I think there. I think there is. Like I said, Paul, I think there's a lot of stuff that, and we show them every week. We talk about it every week. It's the it's the consistency and the eliminating of the six to eight, eight to ten plays a game that are showing up, and it's across the board, right? Like it's not just one guy. It's not just one group. Like I think it comes down to the unit, just the consistency, play in and play out. You never know what play is going to be a difference in the game. You you never know. It could be early in the game. It could be late in the game. Um, but at the most critical times, especially late in the game, we got to be at our best, and we got to make sure that we're executing at a high level and performing and finding ways to get off the field. What needs to, have, what needs to guys... happen in terms of your guys that are supposed to set the edge to – Prevent runners from either bouncing outside or being able to turn the corner. I think we got to keep our we got to keep our presence there, right? We got to try not to do too much. Try not to make plays that are not really our plays to make. Those everybody wants to be involved. Everybody wants to get produ- wants to be productive, right? But when you're out there on the edge, you got to be there. Like your hat's got to be there. If those runners feel like they can test you, they're going to test you, right? So we got to make sure we they see us out there. We don't start coming under or trying to get off blocks early out there to try to make a play that somebody else is fitting that gap inside anyway to help us. So it's making sure we do our job, understand what plays you're supposed to make. And if you fall in late on something, great. But make sure you make the ones you're supposed to make. That message of make the plays you're supposed to make, don't try and do too much, is a message that Mike was saying after the Indianapolis game. And it feels like here we are with the same message sort of about that edge play. What's it going to take for that message to sort of get through and turn into results? I hope showing them in the results that we've had from them not doing that at times, right? Like uh, proofs in the pudding, everything's on film. We can see see it all. Um, making sure these guys understand, like, the guy's right behind you and is going to make the play. Don't jump inside because now he's not going to be able to make you right. There's a time and place, and I talked about earlier, where these back-end guys have to make guys right, right? At the same time, if it happens late in the down, at that point they're lying to them. They can't make them right. If it's early in the down, they can read off and they can go play and they can correct them and fit where they need to fit. But if you lie to a guy late in the down and start showing somewhere and then show come back in late, those it's tough for those guys to make them right. Yeah, I thought uh, we left some uh, things out on the field this past game against Pittsburgh. Um, one, we got to do a better job blocking for him on the outside. But, uh, you know, he's doing a good job going back there, catching the ball. We're just uh, looking for him to make a guy miss, um, you know, and try to get some more positive yards. So uh, we'll hopefully get that back on track this week because uh, I felt like uh, that was kind of our low point on our special teams this past week. Until further notice, or you've been tempted to go back to Kyle? No, I, Eric's, uh, you know, earned the right to to continue to do it for us. Um, you know, and hopefully this week will be will be better. But uh, yeah, I think he's earned the right to to be our starting punt returner. Did it feel like it was a regression maybe from week one, or are you still seeing that? No, I mean, I, I think he does a good job. We've we got to do a better job blocking for him. You know, that's that's a key thing for us. You know, we, we want to try to win on the outside with those guys, and it's, and it's a tough job for him. Um, you know, they got a guy that's running as fast as he can. We're trying to backpedal, get our hands on guys. But uh, we've taken pride in that um, for four or five years. Guys on the outside, whether it's single or double press, uh, they've taken a, a big time pride in it, and they've done a good job. So we got to continue to work on that and do a better job for Eric too. Did you feel like I guess like hey York made some strides maybe during the time he was here, and I hate to see him, uh, hate to see him go. Sure, you know I'm happy for him. You know, anytime you get um, 
you know, part of an active squad. Um, you're happy for the player. But, uh, yeah, we thought he made really good strides while he was here. Um, he simplified a bunch of things, kind of got back to what he was doing um, at LSU. And, uh, you know, he's got a lot of potential um, and a lot of good traits, and uh, hopefully it works out for him. How enjoyable is it to send Nick Folk out there every time? Well, you feel good because every time you send him out there, um, you expect him to make it. Um, I think that's the confidence level that we have in him. He has in himself, um, and he's proven it year after year. Um, you know, even when we go out and practice, uh, when he trots out there, we we expect him to make all those, um, and he does a really good job, obviously. So, feel really fortunate that uh, we went out and got him. Um, you know, and he's been a really great addition to our our special teams units. Him personally and spending some time with him, getting to know him a little bit. No, oh, he's awesome. Got a great family. Um, you know, he's a very happy-go-lucky guy. You know, nothing. He never gets too uh, too high or too low. He's the same thing every day. Uh, so it's it's been really fun to have him around. You know, with the younger guys, even with Stonehouse. You know, Stoney's still a young young player for us. So he obviously helps out Ryan a bunch too. So we're just really excited to have him with us. Easy have a good guys. day. And watch how we do things and watch how Ryan operated early on in the year. I think it's really benefited him um, as he's starting to play. Well, how, did, how did Ryan maybe handle the situation? How do you maybe expect him to handle things maybe moving forward? Right. Ryan's been great. He's been a true pro. Um, he's been in all the meetings. He's been willing to help in any way possible. Um, um, so uh, so it, that's what I expect from Ryan. He's the ultimate pro, and I'm sure he'll continue to be that way. Will seems to have a good sense of, of poise and calmness through pressure, and the moment doesn't seem to be too big for him. Have you noticed that an unusual calmness about him than a typical rookie or young quarterback? You know, he has. He's, you know, in the, the, the two games that he started, um, he has been calm, and, you know, he comes to the sideline, we look at the... We look at the iPad, we figure out what's going on, maybe where's where the read should be here, where the protection should be here. So he's been very good about that, been very coachable on the sideline. We just kind of go out and try to give him some clues and take it from there. Do you think, about, you know, because he hadn't played a lot, like you hadn't really seen him play since August up until the game against Atlanta. Any part of you surprised at how maybe well he's played right out of the gate in the first two games? Uh, I don't know been surprised um, I guess the best thing that he's done is his preparation I think like any young player in this league you got to understand what it takes to be successful in this league and I think Ryan set a great example in the room and sets a great example in the room of what it takes to play the quarterback position and what it takes to prepare each week and I think Will's starting to figure that out and his preparation these last few weeks has been has been really good and I think that's contributed to him um, playing better what does it say look like like is he one of those guys that gets there early stays late or has he done that from, from the time he's been here yeah you know yes he has he, he's in you know we sent him the plan the night before and he comes in he studies it he has good questions we review it um, he's in early he watches a lot of film and I just think his preparation is what's helped him get off to a good start now obviously it's, it's just a start it's only eight quarters and he's got to keep um, improving getting better but I think he's heading in the right direction how much did that kind of QB training program you could deal with him on Mondays and then after practice how much did that just help him be ready to step in for, for that first start and, and last week as well we know the, the goal was was to to try to prepare him and try to prepare any player on the team to to, to be ready to play when their numbers called so whether it was throwing on mondays or calling plays after practice or running through it with there you try to simulate to the best of your ability um, what it's going to be like in a game situation and you try to put him through as many things as you can whether it's on the field in the film room and you're trying to groom these guys to one day be able to to, to be starters and be successful players in this league so everything we did was to try to build him for this moment and uh, hopefully he can continue to capitalize on Now, you look at the early success that he's had, right? Four touchdowns, a pretty solid outing last week. That dictates a lot of expectations. How do you go about just being patient with him, understanding he's a developing player, but still having the standard be the standard? You know, he sets a high standard for himself. He's he's very hard on himself, very critical on himself. So I don't think that's an, an issue at all. I just think it's just... Be yourself, continue to be who you're being. Don't change the preparation. Your preparation's been good. Don't try to be anybody different. You just go out there, be Will, and um, lead the team. Pure curiosity, but have you ever asked him just stand flat-footed and throw it as far as he can? Have you ever just tested I, I, that? <laughs> um, I have not. I'm sure he's done it before, but I've never asked him to do it. Yeah, <laughs> what, what's maybe the most impressive throw you've seen him make? Um, you know, I've just – really the, the thing that I've been most proud of him for is – developing a second pitch that we've always talked about you know a lot of times it was you know 
particularly he had a fastball. So we all know he's got a fastball, but he does. He's got a sinker, he's got a change up, he's got a slider. So um, just to see him, the different club selection on some of his throws, that's, that's been uh, the biggest point of improvement that, that I've been proud of.